Today, we are going to review, as promised, Bald's Eye Salve, which obviously came from a thousand year old manuscript called Bald's Leech Book, which was translated at the University of Nottingham. Now, to refamiliarize those who are not familiar with Bald's Eye Salve, it is an incredibly powerful antimicrobial, which actually rivals today's antibiotics without the toxic effects. Now, keep in mind for this video, I like to keep it in the realm of entertainment only. That kind of keeps to be a little bit uh, safe, so to say. In regard to the title, a thousand year old antimicrobial remedy with anti staphylococcal activity, published in the American Society for Microbiology, Ball's Leech Book, as we discussed, made headlines after a team in Nottingham discovered that one of its recipes for a poultice for an affected eye can combat the superbug MRSA. And combat really is just like an, an understatement of how effective it is, especially compared to today's antibiotics. Again, this was translated from the University of Nottingham. And University of Nottingham, I want to keep in mind for those who want to re -familiar, uh, familiarize yourself with, did an incredible video, which I want to make reference to at the end, if you want to go and look at the history of Ball's Eye Salve itself. Yes, in Ball's Leech Book is the same thousand year old manuscript, which brought us great things such as cure for hair lip or cleft palate, which discovered early plastic surgery, yes, over a millennia ago. And also on top of that, just to give it a good balance, cure for overly lustful man or for an impotent man, also from the same manuscript. Ball's eye salve. Let's look how effective it is first, and I'm gonna go right into the formula. Now look at this graph. This is obviously the control. It's compared to vancomycin. And look how, now you see ESO and ESL. All right, that's because two different formulas from uh, versions of the same formula, Ball's Eye Salve. One is derived from onions, one they use leech. In any case, they still blew the pants off of vicomycin in regard to this one particular test. Again, this has not been, this has not been tested in humans yet, but it has been tested on animal tissue with incredibly effective results. So, how do you make it? Well, if you go look like the old Anglo-Saxon literature, this is how. But if you're not great at translating Anglo-Saxon, I'll read you directly from the manuscript. It goes, make an eye salve against a wen, which could be like a sty. Take equal amounts of croplia, or which was an alien species, and garlic, pound well together. Take equal amounts of wine, an ox skyle. Mix with the alliums, which could be a leek or onion. Put this in a brass vessel. Let the mixture stand for nine, 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 nine nights in the brass vessel. Ring through a cloth and clarify well. Put it in a horn and at night apply it to the eye with a feather for the best medicine. So Ball's Eye South, keep in mind, is only effective when the recipe is followed. Now, to interpret the recipe, at least how the researchers did the recipe, and I'm going to post this at the end of the video also, so you can use it for your own review and you can take time to write it down. But one sec. All right, the recipe is as follows. I'm not going to read the entire excerpt. I'm just going to read the highlights from each excerpt so it can move a little faster. 25 milliliters finely chopped garlic bulb was mixed in with either 25 milliliters peeled, finely chopped yellow onion, or 25 milliliters finely chopped leek leaves. And these ingredients were crushed with a mortar and pestle for two minutes. Follow the instructions accordingly. Then 25 milliliters of wine, the one they, they used was from Pinard Organic Wines, which ironically is pretty much the same vineyard that was actually referenced in uh, Ball's uh, leech book, or for the eye salve itself. And then basically, uh, to -do 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 -do, where I list off, was added to the crushed alliums and they used the organic English white wine. Then they added 25 milliliters of bovine salts, the source is listed there, dissolved in water, basically to a base, the same amount that you usually found uh, in a bovine gallbladder. Sounds disgusting, but you can find this stuff if you really want to look for it fairly easily online. Oh, once again, entertainment purpose. The mixture of alliums, wine, and oxgal was placed in a sterile 250 milliliter Duran bottle and basically nine clean and sterile 15 millimeter squares of 0.51 millimeter 260 brass sheets were added to the bottle to stimulate the copper alloy vessel. Do you have to be that accurate to weigh that much? They just tried to do the exact same thing, so that could be a variable. The lid was closed in the bottle wrapped in foil because they didn't want to expose it to light. 
And then, basically, they, the recipes denoted that the basically, because uh, they don't know if it was light sensitive. So move forward. The recipes denoted in ESO, one for onions, and ESL for link, uh, leeks, was then refrigerated for four, centigrade, four degrees centigrade for nine days. The reason they did four degrees centigrade for nine days is as follows, because they reasoned that the daily fluctuations in ambient temperature in the laboratory caused by heating during working hours are probably less realistic than a constant cool temperature. So what does it say in non-scientific terms? They kind of guessed. The recipe then called for the mixture to be strained and purified well before use or further storage. And because Oxgal, Oxgal uh, does not fully dissolve in the mixture, the finished eye salve always contains a fine white precipitate. And of course, what they mean by vortex, if you want to read further, is they basically just mixed it up well as well as they possibly could. So be, and also, too, keep in mind, Ball's eye salve retained its anti staphylococcal activity for at least 30 days, whether it be the onion form or the leak form, at least 30 days. So that's at least as far as they actually measured its activity. If it lasts longer, maybe, don't know, they have to measure the activity beyond that 30 days. And I hope that gets a little bit of an idea on how really kind of simple this formula is to make, and how, but yet how incredibly effective it is compared to today's uh, first line defense against MRSA. Even though it be a thousand years old, you can either say, well, they're way ahead of the time, or they got extremely lucky. Either way, an incredible formula. Enjoy. The link to the actual research is below, and also the link to the history of this great formula and the great work done by the University of Nottingham itself. Again, this is Ralph Church Channel, signing off. And as always, I hope you find this information useful. Catch you all next time. Bye.